before getting into um, trigonometry and the trigonometric uh, functions, we need to first talk about angles and how angles can be formed. Um, and specifically talking about what type of measurement we're using for angles. Um, remember that an angle is two rays that share a common point. Uh, the common point is your vertex. And your other two parts of the ray are your sides. So this angle, remember your vertex has to be in the middle of your label of how you denote this, is angle BAC or angle CAB. So again, the vertex has to be the middle letter. It is always best to use three points in order to denote your angle. Uh, the reason why is because you could actually have another angle that splits, say, BAC, and you, if you just say angle A, you don't know specifically which angle you're looking at. Um, there are three different types of ways that you could represent the measure of an angle. Uh, the most common way that most of you probably know is using degrees. Um, degrees, we have, actually it would probably be easier, never mind. Degrees, um, you are going from 0 to potentially 360 for a full circle. Um, if you're going past that, you know that you are going one revolution and then, then, then some. Um, so 0 to 360, where the positive degree is counterclockwise. So obviously negative degree is clockwise. Um, a revolution, this is the one I should have started with to make it so it makes sense. A revolution is how many times you go around in a circle. Um, it is related to degrees, that's why I should have started with it. Um, one revolution is 360 degrees. Um, so, like I said, this is one complete circle. And the last but not least, this is the one that a lot of people get confused on. It's radians. Radian measures are based off of pi. Okay. And I say it's based off of pi because a radian is dealing with arc length. So it's a relation to arc length. Um, the biggest thing you need to know is you go from 0 to 2 pi for a full circle. So the biggest thing is, okay, now that we know what our different measures are, it's converting between the three. That gets a little tricky. So for instance, let's say that I have 120 degrees. So we want to convert to revolutions and radian measure. All right, so let's first start with revolutions. I'm going to take 120 times, all right, let's do my unit conversions correctly. So it's like science here. So we've got one revolution for every 360 degrees. So by my unit conversion here, I know that the degrees are going to cancel, and I'm left with revolutions. Hence, why we've got my unit conversion here. So I've got 120 divided by 360. So this is going to give me 1 over 3 revolutions. All right, radians. Again, we're going to set up our 
conversions here. So I've got 120 degrees. It's going to be 180 degrees for pi radians. So we have 120 pi divided by 180. So again, the degrees cancel. So realistically, 12 over 18 divided by 3 gives me 4. Actually, we can take out 6. So that would be 2 over 3. So leave, when you're dealing with radians, make sure you leave it in terms of pi. Um, so notice I just took 120 and divided it by 180 to give me that 2 thirds. Now, let's keep going and look at these different conversions that we have. All right, so let's say that we've got 1.75 revolutions. Convert. Convert to degrees and radians. All right, so the first thing, since revolutions relate to degrees, um, I'm going to work with that one first. So I have 1.75 revolutions over 1 times, well, 1 revolution has to be on the bottom so that I get my unit conversion correctly, and then it's 360 degrees. So now I can cross out the revolutions and do some quick math in my head. So I know that one revolution is 360, 3 quarters is 270, so add those two together and I get 630 degrees. Alright, so now to finish this out, we're going to convert to radians. So we've got 1.75 revolutions over 1 times well, one revolution is 2 pi radians. Okay, going back to that definition I gave you, it goes from 0 to 2 pi. Um, so now my revolutions cancel, and I've got 1.75 times 2. Um, since we're dealing with radians, try not to use decimals. They don't like decimals. Um, so technically it's 3.5 pi, um, but just convert that to a fraction, it's no big deal, 7 pi over 2 radians. And we'll go one more just for good measure here. We'll start in radians, so let's go with, we've got 5 pi over 6 um, radians, convert. You already know where this is going. Alright, so let's start with degrees. So I've got 5 pi over 6 radians times, it's not 1 radian, it's pi radians. That's what's kind of goofy, all the other ones were 1 radian. And that's going to be 180 degrees. So the nice thing with this is that the radians cancel as well as the pi. So we've got 5 times 180 divided by 6 to give us 150 degrees. And then last but not least, convert to revolutions. So it's 5 pi over 6 radians times, well, 1 revolution, remember, is 2 pi. Again, notice the pi's cancel, which is very, very nice of them. Um, so we get 5 over 12 revolutions. I know that was a lot of converting, but I wanted to go through and show you what happens if we get different ones because it does flip a little bit. But all this really is is just your unit conversions like you would do in science.